All right, Mines, it's time to talk about the Seattle Seahawks. This was a team left for dead. They had a couple of tough losses going into this game, but they turned it around with an absolutely dominating performance against a desperate Jets team that got Mike White back. There were some you know, rumors around the NFL sphere that Mike White returning would make this Jets offense explosive and deadly in Seattle. Didn't happen at all. The Seattle defense stepped up big time and shut the Jets down. 23 to 6 is the final. The Seahawks stay right on schedule to keep pace in the NFC wild card. And I know you got a few thoughts on this game, Mice. Before I hand it over to you, Seahawks fan, 12th man, we want to hear from you in the comments section below. Give us your MVP for this dominant victory. Look, I know Geno Smith didn't have a huge statistical day. I know the offense didn't put up an egregious amount of points, but this game to me was just the biggest statement win by this whole Seattle team as any win they've had this season. I think it was a huge win. Give us your MVP in the comments section below. But Myers, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, what I think is an absolutely massive Seahawks victory. Uh, yeah, Nick, I'm glad to see that the uh, Legion of Boom was back out there on the yeah. field today. Uh, they absolutely locked it down. And I don't even think it's fair to call them the Legion of Boom because quite frankly, Nick, they played a little bit better. They're a little bit more like of a lively defense, in my opinion, because of all the youth they have. I just like this young core unit on the Seahawks defense, led, of course, by who I would say there's an argument to be made between who is the defensive rookie of the year. Is it Sauce Gardner? Is it Tariq Woolen? And up until this point, I'd say Sauce Gardner has kind of edged his way out in the front just a little bit. But today, Tariq Woolen kind of outshined him by a good margin in this game. And that's a heads-up game uh, where you see them both on the field uh, in the same night. So I... I I think Tariq Woolen may have made his case to say, listen, I deserve to be defensive rookie of the year. That's what I got on this game. You know, he got the uh, the fumble recovery. Uh, he got, so he was all over the field, got seven tackles. You know, it just a lockdown kind of guy, Nicky. And you can even pull up the stats I, I saw uh, between Gardner and Woolen. And Woolen actually edges him out in a lot of different stats uh, all across the board. So it's very close. They're both excellent players. I'm not. We're splitting hairs here, but I think Tariq Woolen really made a case for himself tonight. And the Seahawks look to be back. Nick, they beat a good team. They put up 23 against this elite Jets defense. I really like what I saw from them tonight. What did you think about it? Yeah, you bring up a great point. I kind of didn't think about it too much. But the Jets defense is actually outstanding. Of course, you have Sauce Gardner, but up front in the front seven, they're very stout as well. They're very well coached. Robert Stala, of course, made his name as a defensive coach in the NFL. So, yeah, 23 points against Seattle, against the New York Jets, sorry, is actually not too much to hang your hat on. I think Geno Smith didn't have his best day, but didn't do terrible. The running game, Kenneth Walker, well over 100 yards, most of it on that long run. DJ Dallas got involved as well. So, you know, this offensive line and running game did a pretty good good job handling it on their end. But if, when I look at the numbers here, this is the part you talk about the secondary. Garrett Wilson, a guy a lot of people thought maybe could sneak into offensive rookie of the year for the New York Jets. He's been absolutely spectacular. A total of three catches on 11 targets for 18 yards. That's outstanding work by the Seattle Seahawks secondary. And that kind of performance factored into a running game and offensive line play that they're going into shows to me that this team is a legitimate playoff contender. Obviously, they're right in the thick of it. And that's what we're going to head over and talk about now real quick. Looking at their current situation, the way the entire uh, NFC playoff picture is shaped up, it's pretty simple. And using the 538 predictor, right, the Seahawks have a pretty good chance to get in the playoffs. They just need two things to happen. They just have to win next week at home against the Los Angeles Rams. I think that's going to happen. They already beat the Rams in L.A. I like their chances even better in Seattle against Baker Mayfield. And then they need the Detroit Lions to handle business and beat Green Bay. They do that, and they're in. It's just that simple, Mize. It's, it's, it's one of those possible. things. Very, very possible. And I think this is one of those things where right now, you saw it earlier in the season when Seattle was hot, getting those big wins against the Lions, right? They kind of set the tone now. They have the tiebreakers on their side. I like the Lions to potentially beat the Packers. That's going to be a tough game, but I think the Seahawks will handle business against the Rams. And I think this Seahawks team showed today that if they get in the playoffs, they have enough of key pieces at the right spots to be dangerous. Yeah, Nate, and I, I just like what I see from the Seattle team in general as far as going into playoffs. Because when you look uh, – at the breakdown of, you know, who is coming in from the NFC side of things. I think that the NFC side of the ball uh, for playoffs, rather, is a little bit easier. I think they have a few top-tier teams, but I think it's a little bit easier. So if a team like Seattle comes in 
They get healthy, and they're playing very, very tight right now. I think this is a, a cohesive unit. I think they have a chance to win a couple games, and you know, you never know what may happen. But if things fall their way, this is the type of team, and I think it's set up nicely for them uh, to come in and potentially upset a couple teams in the playoffs if they can make it there, Nick. So I really like what they show, and I really like their chances if everything falls their way, which, as you said, uh, I think they're going to beat the Rams. And then I think that the Lions have a fair chance at beating Green Bay. Green Bay obviously put on a performance tonight against the Vikings, but there was a lot of nitpicky stuff going on. The kick return, the interception return for a touchdown. You take those two out, then maybe takes the wind out of Green Bay sails a little bit. The Detroit Lions are a much tougher team to play than the Vikings. So I think there we got to watch that game very closely. That'll probably be the game of the night for Seahawks fans to watch to see uh, what is going on for them down the stretch.